Hey all, welcome to another cocktail hour. I'm Andy. I'm Sherry. I'm Colette. Wow, the gang is all here on time. As last week's show, you know, we actually talked about what we're gonna what we were gonna read and review and what day. It was just a marvelous, marvelous show. And now we'll be punished for that. That's <laughs> right. And now you will be <laughs> you and us will be punished uh, with our recent read. But before we get to that, let's talk about what we're all drinking. So let's start with Colette this time. What you drinking, Colette? I am drinking scotch. Um, I was out and about today and I stopped in at the liquor store and I saw that they had Brunelotti, Ooh. which is not typically a scotch that I stumble across. So I went ahead and bought a bottle. Nice. It's it's got a, a, a real campfire-y flavor going on, which I'm kind of liking. Nice. And you're doing it neat, I see. Yes. Well, it was over ice, but it's hot and <laughs> cold. I'm not going to lie. It's like in triple digits here. I believe that your face is all red. I'm oh, assuming that, it's warm and you're sweaty. That's pretty. Well, no, I think that's the scotch, actually. Could like, be the flame. If you sure. were to go back and look at some of these episodes, you find that I get pinker as the episode you goes. Do. This one you'll be purple for a totally different reason. <laughs> oh, that's probably right. no. yeah. yeah. I was gonna say if it's that hot, get off that. What is that? A flannel shirt you got on? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm not I'm not warm right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. What you drinking, Sherry? I am having uh some of my seed lip. Uh my seed lip. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um and some Pellegrino. Nice cold <clears throat> beverage. Yum. Pellegrino's delicious. My packer. Yes. Go pack. Go. No so, cheese head pat. No, no cheese head. No, no cheese. this is their Super Bowl championship. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So your your power came on just in time for the show. It's awesome. <laughs> it came on yesterday morning at 4:30. Um, wow. I so, plan on yeah. being cold. Well, when you said that you were going through your fridge, I assumed that was because your power had come back on and you had a fridge full of rotten food. Three, three fridges. We have three fridges. Um, that's a one lot. One in the basement because that's where we put the fridge that was here. And then we have, because if you live in Wisconsin, I don't know if you know this, it's mandatory that you have a fridge in your garage. Um, that's where you store all of your beverages, your beer and your, your cold drinks for when it's summertime and you're doing stuff. So we just, I know TJ was like, I've never heard of such a thing. And I'm like, yeah, everybody's got a fridge in their garage here. It's what you do. Yeah, I mean, it's not unheard of. I can't say that everybody does it, but I mean, I've had lots of parties where people congregated in the garage with the door up because that's where all the beverages were. Yes, that yeah. is. Yeah. So um, that's where I usually keep like the meat. Um, so in the freezer in there. So yes, it was a it was a sad, sad day in the Fuller home yesterday. Wow. Um, yeah. But your insurance, your homeowner's insurance should cover all of that. Somebody said that, but so I need to look into that. Yeah, uh, totally. had I've, that. I've made that claim because of hurricane power outage and they cover it. Wow. And Carol, Carol's here. Hi, Carol. I know lots hey, of people in Connecticut uh, mm -hmm. with frid with fridges in the garage. And you have see all the cool people, all the cool kids have fridges in their garages. It's true. Where is the third refrigerator? In the in the basement. There's one in the basement. There's one in the kitchen, and one in the garage. That's a lot of damn fridges. Well, what we really need is a freezer for the basement, like a like a what, what, yeah. I don't know what they're called, like cabinet freezers. I don't know. Yeah. Jet freezers. A freezer you can tie house. a dead body in. Yeah, one of those. Oh, mm -hmm. Carol says I need to check my utility company first. I will do that. That will be on my list this week. Is to check that stuff out. Andy, cool. Andy, hmm. Andy, now that I'm nice and cool and refreshed. <laughs> Um, what are you drinking? Oh, I'm having a little uh, <clears throat> tea and G. Hmm. I mean, G and T. Tea. Tea and tea. 
Are you actually drinking tonic? No, it's actually, um, it's that sparkling water with lime. So a little gin and sparkling water. It's delicious. Yeah. That, that's the best way to do it because you really get to taste that gin. Yeah, I don't want all that sweet with the tonic yeah. water. What gin are you drinking? Uh, Rangpur. Tangare yeah. Rangpur, delicious. Yes, it's very good. It's so good. The botanicals. Mm. Mm. You know. Delicious. Okay. <laughs> so now like, that we have the- It went out of Christmas tree. Mm. The what? A Christmas tree? <laughs> it's like a Christmas tree. It's, I know, it's, it's the part delicious of the appeal. Christmas tree ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have uh, we have some housekeeping. <laughs> this 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 go around before we discuss our experiences with tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> so first and foremost, uh, I want to thank, or we all want to thank Sue Ellen and Sue for the generous uh, donation to the cause. Yep. Um, we we will use the funds wisely to. Uh, either do some giveaways from our cafe press store or uh, purchase books that will hopefully be much, much better <laughs> than this one. Um, <laughs> but we thank you very much. Yes. Um, and uh, speaking of cafe press, I do want to remind folks that uh, that cocktail hour does have a cafe press store where you can get all kinds of wonderful merchandise like shot glasses, pint glasses, t-shirts, hoodies, blankets, all kinds of stuff. Mm. Uh, and Colette Moody also has a cafe press store called Underpants Jones, where you can purchase this fancy Trice Me shirt. Or, oh, I'm not using my tanker. Oh, this, your this beautiful tea tanker. I know, I forgot all about it. Uh, so you can get tankards, you can get all kinds of fun designs at, uh, at Colette's uh, Cafe Press Store. So make sure you go there too. Um, if you are interested in contributing to the cause, you can also, uh, uh, there's a link on our YouTube channel to, uh, to click to, uh, if you want to donate through PayPal. It's a paypal.me and then it's under cocktail hour show at cocktail hour show. And um, anytime, if any of you have any book suggestions that you think that we would enjoy, uh, we prefer if you are not the author of that book, <laughs> making that suggestion, we tend to frown on that. I mean, to be fair, I would be a little afraid to be like, <laughs> Hey, let's totally rip mine apart. I mean, <coughs> well, you know what I mean? Books, yeah, but um, I mean, if you're into roasting and you're not a friend of ours, um, you know, feel free. There you go. But we really prefer not to have the author suggest that. I'm big on um, not doing that. For good reason. Now, speaking of roasting, let's talk about the book that we, we read. <laughs> The title, the title, as Sherry just showed you, the book, uh, Tangerine by Christine Mangan. And and the spelling of that to avoid that book is M-A-N-G-O-N. <laughs> In case you accidentally pick it up. You want to write this down and keep it handy. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly says, one of the best debuts of the year echoes right. of Gillian Flynn and Patricia Highsmith in this tightly wound exotic story. So no. let's let's talk about that. Well, so no. first of all, Gillian Flynn, we do not have positive things to say about. I do. Okay. Andy and I out. do not have positive things to say about Gillian Flynn, right? Um, right. But let's talk about because. I looked this book up. I was well into it at the time. And <laughs> it was a very feast or famine experience with the ratings, right? Yeah. It was yeah. either four or five stars or right. one. Yeah. There was not a lot of in between. What? So this is the worst book I possibly the worst book I've ever read in my life. Definitely the worst book I've read this year. But those are mixed in with four and five star books. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. Who loved it. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of thought, just based on math, 
that one of us would probably love it, but that didn't happen. It did not. <laughs> Had a one in three chance, Christine. Yeah, three but chance. Yeah. It didn't work. Well, let me read the blurb uh, yeah. from the book, okay? The last person Alice Shipley expected to see since arriving in Tangier with her new husband was Lucy Mason. After the accident at Bennington, the two friends, once inseparable roommates, haven't spoken in more than a year. But here was Lucy, trying to make things right and return to their old rhythms. Perhaps Alice should be glad for a friendly face. She is not adjusted to life in Morocco, too afraid to venture out into the bustling Medinas and oppressive heat. Lucy, always fearless and independent, helps Alice to emerge from her flat and explore the country. But soon, a familiar feel feeling starts to overtake Alice. She feels controlled and stifled by Lucy at every turn. Then Alice's husband, John, goes missing, and Alice starts to question everything around her. Her relationship with, with her enigmatic friend, her decision to ever come to Tangier, and her very own state of mind. Tangerine is a sharp dagger of a book, a debut so tightly wound, so replete with exotic imagery and charm, so full of precise detail and extraordinary craftsmanship. It will leave you absolutely breathless. I'm it will sorry. Breathless from screaming, no fucking way! <laughs> this is incredible bullshit! Extraordinary craftsmanship. It was not. It was this not, was not was like that. a handmade table. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's just an interesting way to describe a book. But um, yeah, so I was intrigued because A, it's a period piece, right? It takes place in the 1950s in Morocco. Um, and B, it was called, I feel like a number of people said it was very Hitchcockian. Right. Yes, and, yes. and I kind of get that. Mm -hmm. based, but I mean, that's kind of purely based on the setting. Right. Um, the man who knew too much is in the exact same time and place. 1952 Morocco. Mm. Right. That's the one with Doris Day and Kay Sera Sera and um, Jimmy Stewart. I have seen it years somebody's ago. Somebody's a spy and somebody's dead and blah, blah, blah. Right. So I, you know, I think when they say Hitchcockian, I think that's purely what they're talking about is. The yeah, that could um, very well be. I find it hilarious that Andy barely made it through that blurb. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, hold on. Uh, I just want to, Carol, you are too generous. Carol just made a donation that was way too much money. Oh. Wow. Thanks, Carol. So, thank you, Carol. It's is it out of pity because we all love this book? Is she trying to make us feel better? Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Maybe. You know, I, I yeah, we can talk about my experience with reading the book and the gaslighting I did. But <laughs> but I yeah. think one of the things was that I think, oh God, I've read so much in reviews and comments about this. Sherry, did you talk about the book cover? I have not. Okay. It must have been one of those 800 reviews I read. And somebody that actually didn't like it was intrigued because of the blurb on the book and because of the cover. That it, the cover looked like it could, it was very flowery. It's actually much better written in the book. But um, how it's in black and white and looks like somebody's in pure and white and they have their hand help because, you know, the future might be sketchy ahead and there's this gorgeous palm tree and i'm like oh okay all right all right um but this was before i actually read it so i thought hmm, maybe maybe but yeah that was the best part of that book actually was that review i feel like the um no the the hands over the eyes that could be hiding her identity which we that could be too uh, uh, yeah uh, yeah okay yep. so let's get let's get into the discussion all right, so spoilers? No, oh, hell yes. Spoilers. They deserve to be oh, spoiled. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you don't want anybody to read this goddamn book. They're already spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> the whole book is spoiled. <laughs> spoiled like the, like the meat in my freezer spoiled. Okay. All right. Yay. All right. Just All right. Make that clear. Yeah, right, right. You want me to tell my story first? 
Sure. The story of how you intentionally misled me, <laughs> that story. Terry swears I gaslighted her. Let me tell you what happened. <clears throat> it was, a, it was a, a week before the show. Maybe it, a week before the show. It was a few show. days ago. I hadn't started it. So I was like, oh, oh my God. God. So I popped on Minecraft and I'm listening to the book. I'm doing my thing, just mining, you know, just trying to get in that Zen place. So I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening some more. I get about four hours into the story and I'm like, what the fuck? So I stop listening to it. I go on to Goodreads. I start looking at some of the reviews and just like Colette said, some of them are absolutely glowing, like five stars. And then you have no, not much middle. And then other people are just like flat out ones. I'm like, Jesus. So I did a little Google search and I found this website that gave you like the, the entire plot summary, not just a book blurb. So remember I'm in about four hours and I'm reading this thing and I'm like, Oh my God, I just saved myself so much headache. In the meantime, <laughs> I'm mad at you. <laughs> in the meantime, Sherry texts me. It's like, now how did you say it? I said, have you started our assignment yet? And you said, I started it and finished it. What a waste of time. Now, I ask you, lovely people, what does that mean to you? Does that mean <laughs> that I started it and I completed reading the book? Or does that mean I started it and abandoned it and didn't actually say that? What does it say to you? I can't help how you took that. <laughs> I started it. And I this, it. and this we have the gaslighting. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so anyway, it's totally so appropriate then, for this shit. <laughs> by a couple of days ago, I was, I think I had about three hours left, um, and I was not enjoying it. And at that point, I had picked up Sherry's habit of. You can increase the speed on an audio book. You did. Make it go faster. <laughs> Which is what I was trying to do. Um, but then I got Andy's message about, oh, yeah, this is awful. And you sh don't waste your time. Here is a URL to give you the plot of the book. So with that juncture, I was like, oh, well, cool. I'm not going to waste <laughs> my time <laughs> reading the last three hours of this. Um, because I thought, legit, that Andy had read the whole thing and was like, don't. See? So um, so I then I see. bailed too, based on the fact that Andy said, go ahead and bail, because it's terrible. And, here, and here's me. No, no, no. If you guys are going to read it, I mean, I suggested this horrible train wreck. I should be, you know, I should absolutely read it if you guys are, because that would just be like what I did to Megan when we were reading the book that shall not be named. I'm not allowed to say the name. Megan gets mad when I say it um, because wow. I'm just that bad. Um, and I talked her into reading it because the first, I don't know, quarter of the book, half of the book, I was really, I thought it was really interesting and awesome. And then it just took a nosedive. And wow. I I had like two chapters left. And I'm like, I can't fucking do this. Uh, wow. And she finished it. And I didn't want to do that to you guys. I mean, that's pretty uncommon, though, for something to boomerang like that. Oh, my God. Something that you're really enjoying. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it, it basically just, shits yeah. the bed and you can't finish it. So what I did do, though, is so I started reading the hardback. Um, and I'm going to keep I keep showing this because I'm mad that I bought it. <laughs> But you didn't pay. But I didn't pay full price. I only paid five dollars. And you still feel cheated, which <laughs> should impart to viewers how bad this is. It's right. Okay. Because, so yeah. the like rule number one for me, um, there has to be a person who I care about. Right. And there's the, your Jillian, there's your Gillian Flynn tie-in. So I yes. can see that because right? I, there was nobody to like. No, everyone is an abysmal piece of shit. I mean, um, Alice wasn't an abysmal piece of shit, but she was just so poorly yes, written. Yes, she was. I know. Yes, she was. Alice? Right? She, yes. 
She was, was this horrible, and... mealy mouthed, oh, well, indecisive. Yeah, I will take whatever abuse that, yeah. some, whatever crumb of abuse that someone will give me. She married a guy who clearly married her for her money. And yeah. it was, it was very cool about it. And where she was miserable. And, um, she dealt with it purely by becoming agoraphobic. Right? She never left the her first apartment. Time, the first fucking time she goes outside and that's it. Then it's just like, hi, Laura. Um, then it's just like, uh, okay, I'm never leaving the house again. What the yeah. fuck? Okay. So well, we and, and like, it's like, it's very hot. Somebody bumped You're me. You're in Africa. <laughs> Like, did you do zero research before you let your grifter husband talk you into moving to fucking Africa? Like, what did you think? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, so Alice, uh, Alice, uh, they kind of go back and forth. It wasn't too awfully bad with the, with the flashbacks. I mean, it, well, I mean, so that's like number two, right? Which is the jumping around in time, right? <laughs> that is one of Andy's pet peeves. Yes. Whereas my pet peeve is not giving a shit if everybody gets on a bus and drives off a cliff. <laughs> right. So we put both of those. But continue. <laughs> so I went back yesterday because I I needed to I needed to laugh because really like legit I was getting really pissed off, um, and I actually stopped with about an hour and a half to go last night because I just couldn't do it anymore. And then I finished this morning while I was doing like five other things because I don't give a shit, but I really <laughs> needed to finish this goddamn book. So, so, so I started with the, with the hardback and then um, after talking with Andy and seeing your response, like, Oh, I'm going to discuss the shit out of this. Um, I was like, I'm not wasting my eyeball time on this fucking book. And I had Andy send me, a, <laughs> send me a link to do another trial on script. And I just listened to it, which let me say, uh, the narrator who did Lucy was awful. She always sounded like she was going to do <laughs> that. Breathless. I think, it's the, I think it's the same woman. From, was it the same woman? Yeah, I think she did a low American <laughs> Because, I mean, even in, right, okay, so we probably should say each chapter alternates POV, right, from the two main characters, Which right? So one, one chapter is Alice, who is British and like, super <laughs> uptight and very naive and has no self-confidence and, um, like, I don't really have a good thing to say about her. No. no. Um, <laughs> right. And then the it. next chapter is Lucy, who has a deep, low American <laughs> accent, right? And they are roommates in college at some artsy fartsy women's school in Vermont, right? In the, in the, I guess the late fifties, right? Because there's only like a year that transpires between what was, occurs. I thought it was at, the forties, wasn't it? Like no, no, no. 1956 is when oh, I guess okay. um, oh, Alice yeah, moves to Morocco. The first chapter, Tangier, 1956. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, only been a year. Yeah, it's only been a year, which is crazy. So these two women are roommates at this women's college. Um, Alice comes from a well-off family. She is an orphan. She has a trust fund that her aunt runs. Auntie. She's gone to America to go to school. And Lucy is also an orphan. Um, but I think from a less well-off family. Yeah, she um, was a scholarship recipient. Can I say... Let me just say the first moment that I wanted to just shut this off and never look at it again was the story that was told by Lucy um, about how she had to kill her dog as a five-year-old. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was really, at that point, I was ready to be done. Like, there's no way that I am ever going 
to care about you as a character now that you have killed your dog. Yeah. But her dad was well, well, at five years old. What the flop, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, I think it was her mom who made no, no, her mom made, made her do it. Dead, but her, I think, yeah. Or well, dead. yeah, but that's where you're conflicting. Cause she think, I think she told Alice that her mom made her do it cause it was her dog or some silly shit. Oh, okay. And she said she hit the dog in the head with a rock. Was it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, I had to turn that off and push away uh, for a little while before I went back. And yeah. that was I not. Can just see you. I can just see you. Nope. Yeah, that way. I mean, that's not deep into the book, right? Like, no. that's not a deep cut. That's basically like chapter three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's really early in the book. Yeah, as these two roommates are getting to know each other, mm -hmm. and we are jumping back and forth between current day Ch Tangier where Lucy sort of shows up unannounced where Alice is living with her um, new husband who is, I mean, he's a grifter. Let's mm -hmm. face it. He seems he's, to be, yes. He's using her for her money, um, right? So she is getting money from her trust fund or inheritance or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. he has no money, but um, he's like, oh, let's go there. Let's go to Tangier and we can do as ever. And that basically consists of her staying in the apartment all day and him going out and having affairs with underage girls, um, which was like strike two <laughs> on the Earp factor, right? First yep. we killed the dog. Right. And then we are having pretty gross um, sex trafficking with minors uh, yeah. extramaritally. Uh, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I was having a lot of difficulty slogging through this story because so now we've got Lucy the dog killer and Alice the Millie Mouth milk toast who <clears throat> just does what basically whatever she's told yeah. yeah and then we have the husband john who is sleeping with underage prostitutes in tangier um and spending his wife's money i guess on said prostitutes mm -hmm. does somebody want to answer that question there was <laughs> I, I pull it. That's why I was so big on finishing it. Uh -huh. And then we flash back to when they're in college and Alice has a boyfriend, Tom. Right? Tom was not a bad guy. No, Tom was like the most decent guy. And just like Killing Cupid, the decent people are the ones who end up dead. They immediately must perish. They must. And right so at the hands of one of the main characters. So here's here's the thing that <laughs> I think pissed me off more than anything. Um, so it turns out that Lucy is infatuated with Alice. She's in love with her. Why? There's because no reason she's that. so strong-willed and... <laughs> There is an adventurous. Yeah, that's it. So I just stay in the apartment and I do lots of laundry. I have no idea where my husband is at any moment. I hope he comes through the door, but if he doesn't, it's fine because I don't really care for him. That's good. What? What, what are you doing? So, so Lucy is in love with Alice and has determined that they are meant to be together. And uh, then Tom shows up, and Lucy, or Alice, stops spending so much time with 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 Lucy, and she's spending all of her time with Alice. And Alice, then we realize, is absolutely fucking insane. Did I say that right? Lucy is absolutely fucking insane. Lucy is fucking insane. Yes. Right. So as broken as Alice is, mm -hmm. it's as insane as Lucy is. So I mean, yeah. really, I guess they're a perfect couple. I guess. But here's the thing that, that, that nearly made me stop, regardless of everything else, regardless of how badly written this is with, with like Andy said, flat characters, Ugh. 
just nothing. Like, there are no actual like plotty type things. It's all just gaslighting and bullshit. Yeah. Um, so the, the I I just don't want to read about any more fucking crazy homicidal lesbians. Right. Who are stuck on a straight chick and determined to eliminate all all obstacles, all compet all competition, yeah. you know, <laughs> all other suitors. So she kills off Tom and and by cutting the brakes and they get into an argument. Lucy and Alice get into an argument. This is while they're in college. Lucy and, and and Alice get into an argument and and Alice is like, I don't want to see you anymore. When I get back, I want all of your stuff gone. And Lucy's like, don't get in the car. And Alice is like, fuck you, I'm getting in the car. Except she says it more like, I will do what I like. And then she gets in the car and Lucy's like, no. Oh my God, the brakes don't work. And Tom dies. Mm. Oopsie. Right, so Alice... Then we find out how Alice, Alice is actually, you know, feels like she's responsible for her parents' death because something about a paraffin heater, some shit. So apparently she burned up her family. I don't know. Yeah. Because I tuned out on, on quite a bit. <laughs> well, it saves him the disappointment of growing up to see what a milk toast she became. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. And I guess... Maybe I'm being unfair, right? Because I had lots of conversations with my mom about her poor choices. Um, <laughs> right? She grew up in the same era. They got married in 57, right? So same era. And um, for those women, I think there was a lot of stuff that was just like, well, these are your options. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I asked her, why did you become a nurse? And she was like, well, I could be a nurse or I could be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And as a woman who hated children, <laughs> she became a nurse. Something you married from your mom. And had children. Oh my God. Um, so my childhood was interesting. I bet. But um, you didn't burn anybody up or cut anybody's brake lines. So. That's true. You know, as far as you know, as far as I know. <laughs> but um, like she'd admit that. Come on, now. yeah. I mean, it does seem like options were limited, but just based on societal sure. standards, right? But I mean, yeah. at the same time, yes, yeah. yeah, she looked like she was she she liked John, they got along well, she knew what was going on, and she was like, when they first started talking about it, she was like, cool, adventure. And then here's part of my problem with, with Alice's character. It was so inconsistently done, right? So there's like, a, a, so from her point of view, when Lucy shows up in Tangier, because also Lucy is fucking crazy and stalking this chick, again, repeatedly, always, always stalking, right? Um, and wait, 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 Alice knew that, but yet she, she still opened the door and let Lucy in. Right, right, right. So, and she, she's like, uh, so we get the, the initial view from Lucy's point of view. And she shows up and she opens up the door and Alice is like, oh, oh, Lucy. And and when we get it from, from Alice's point of view, she's like, oh, fuck, Lucy. And I didn't want to let her in and she's crazy and I don't know why I let her in and blah, 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 blah. blah. And she's got oh, it was the but she does not well, think about that's it. what I did. I let her in. And then I asked her if she wanted cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> and to move in. It's fine. Right. <laughs> right. Stay as long as you like. Feel free to kill this one as well. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't know, though. She didn't find out until yeah, later. Okay, so can we... <laughs> Um, she knew so that basically, she knew that Lucy killed Tom. She no, knew it. and then Lucy no. confessed. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. She, she suspected right? so the, strongly. Basically, the moment where I threw in the towel, <laughs> okay, was um, Alice is unhappy in her marriage, right? She senses that her husband is cheating. Lucy arrives in Tangier and um, in a matter of what felt like minutes, was able to prove that her husband was cheating. 
Yes. That's interesting. The first night they went out, I think it was, the, or the first or second night they went out, they went to yeah. that, that, you know, yeah. that club. And he, she sees him with the underage prostitute <laughs> lady, uh, Sabine. Sabine. And, um, and then, you know, Sabine ends up getting shoved down the street. Okay, so... Uh, can, can we talk about all of the all of the, oh yeah okay I'm sorry so yeah they go off on a trip and 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 she right was, so well, and basically that the brakes were cut well right there's, a, you. there's a moment <laughs> like the most painful romantic moment ever I'm gonna say they, because, right, so Lucy has all of these feelings for Alice. She feels like she has been pushed away multiple times, right? First with Tom, the college boyfriend, and now when Alice got married and moved to Tangier. So she found her. They <coughs> have taken, like, a, a day trip where they're going to stay overnight in another neighboring town. Um and With only one bed in the room. They have this moment where basically Alice is like, yeah, I'd love to get the fuck out of here because my husband sucks. But she and didn't feel that way so much throughout the entire book. I, I mean, don't know that that's true. Back right? and forth, though. I think she just didn't have any other options, right? She's married to this dude who comes and goes as he pleases. She doesn't see him for long periods of time. Right, she right, kind right. of knows that he's cheating. But then after he, after he's missing, she goes on this long thing about how they were perfect and, you know, they meshed so well and sure. how much they liked each other. It was just so inconsistent. Right. So they go off on this day trip and um, Lucy tells Alice, look, I, I know that John is cheating on you, right? I've seen it with my own eyes. I've been here for 11 hours <laughs> and I've worked it all out, right? And then Alice responds badly and then she's like, okay, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I kind of knew. I kind of knew that he was cheating. Well, first she says, I um, don't want to know. Don't say it. I don't want to know. Right. But she knew. She reminds me of Diane Weist in uh, Bullets Over Broadway. Don't speak. Don't speak. Don't speak. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. So then they have this moment where Lucy hits her with the hard truth. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I would love to get out of Tangier with you. Right. And then Lucy sees this as her moment. And she kisses her. Mm -hmm. But then... We piss away any potential romantic moment because she's like, yeah, this kind of felt like it was going to be like it was with Tom. But then after I cut his break lines, I felt kind of bad, but it was <laughs> cool. And I'm sorry that I killed your college boyfriend, but let's get away from your husband. And... I at that that was she doesn't was actually done. say all that of was that. the point where I was done. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't actually say all that, but uh, uh, but then uh, so she says something about the brake lines being cut, and Alice is like, "No one knew that. No one knew it. It was never publicized." I'm like, well, but then okay, cool. Let's go back to Tangier and hang out some more and do absolutely nothing. It was just so much bullshit. And okay, so the thing, so also I've just figured out why this woman has her hands <coughs> face because it's from doing this all the time. <laughs> Fuck! That's what it's from. It's actually her going, I just, I can't take another fucking minute of this book. That's, yeah, I feel like Alfred Hitchcock would have done the same. Yeah. <laughs> Slapped her stuff. To, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so here's here's what I felt to be the most bullshitty part of, of the book. And that is the idea. That's saying story. something. It is. I, I feel like it is. Because, because when... So Lucy has a habit of uh, of pretending, of giving other people's names and pretending to be other people. Which is weird. Yes, yeah. it's very well, that's not a normal person behavior where it's like, oh, my name's Betsy. 
I feel like I want to start doing that just randomly. Sure. Right? <laughs> Hi, my name is um, Susan, and I'm glad to meet you. Oh, I thought you were going to do my, the, my name is what? My name is what? <laughs> wiki, 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 that's what they call me. Um, so, so when when Lucy first gets to Tangier, she's she gets off the off the ship and she is uh, off the ferry, whatever, and she's immediately accosted by these locals who want to either sell shit or be her tour guide. So there's one that just won't go away, Yusuf or Joseph. It depends. Which I didn't understand any of that shit. What I didn't either. That? And why did she continue to meet this guy who she knew was just sort of a local grifter who conned tourists? Because even after John, she had to tie it. it into the end of the of the book. That's it. That's yeah. That is it. You're absolutely. He was a vehicle to get to the end. Yeah, that's what. That's it, was. it. It was ridiculous, and 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 it was just poor. She was like, oh, I'm going to go have lunch with the local grifter. It'll be yeah. fun. He thinks I'm you. Yeah. So so she is. So she immediately for and she's like, I don't know why I did it. But I decided that I would say that I am Alice Shipley. I'm like, OK. Well, that's and I told him I had three buttocks. I don't know why. No, I don't know. It was just <laughs> weird shit that and didn't make any sense. And yeah. then it. To me, it felt like it was purely designed to to dictate the end of the book. Yes, and that's but exactly it didn't it make any sense in the moment, no, and no. Um, it still doesn't kind of make any sense. It makes no sense, especially since later on she starts using, or she we find out that her regular thing to do is to say that she's Sophie Turner, which made me feel terrible for the actress real-life actress Sophie Turner, who played Sansa Stark uh, on Game of Thrones. Um, oh, that's why like I don't know who that is. Yeah, so, you know, it's uh, Sophie Turner, Sophie Turner. I'm just like, oh, poor Sophie Turner. She's she so should have cool. pretended to be Sophie Tucker, and that would have made this much more entertaining. Has Sherry frozen up? Uh-oh. Uh oh, that's not good. I think Sherry's freezing up. And I guess the the other question is, are we frozen up too? <laughs> oh God, no! I think we're still on. Oh no, there she is. You're still on. Oh, okay. okay, okay, okay. Am I back? Yeah, you are back. Okay, yeah. My my internet is. Oh, it's creeping back up. Okay, sorry, I'm on Wi-Fi today. Um. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so, so she always uses uh, Sophie Turner. And like she had met, we find out that she had met um, uh, uh, Aunt Maud in New York and had used the Sophie Turner alias then also. Aunt so, Maud being Alice's aunt. Alice's right. aunt, right. Who's who's the guardian of her of her trust and all of that. So, you know, so she already has the Sophie Turner, who, by the way, was a student at Bennington that apparently <laughs> no one ever spoke to. Um, they just, for some reason, decided uh, that it would be a good name to use. Um, so she had already had the Sophie Turner identity established. So that really makes even less sense when she gets to Tangier, gets off the boat, and immediately says, I'm Alice Shipley. Mm -hmm. Because it's so, it doesn't make any sense at all. And then also, so, so. <laughs> Breathe, breathe. You're okay. Okay. And she continues to to like like uh, Colette said. She continues to meet with Yusuf, the the grifter, um, and already knows that John, Alice's husband, is familiar with this dude. Mm -hmm. Which also led me to believe that he would know that Alice Shipley would yeah. have been his fucking wife. Yeah. But apparently, Yusuf has no idea. He knows everything and everyone. But, but not that. But and maybe it's because she never leaves the apartment. Right, she never leaves the house. Because she's but, such a strong-willed But then he would know woman. that she never left the apartment. He knew immediately who John Shipley was having an affair with. Yep, yep. Yes. It made no sense. None of it made yeah. any sense. So yeah. luckily, um, 
luckily Lucy kills John and we're happy for it. We are. <laughs> we are. Too oh, bad she didn't Lucy, jump Lucy, off the cliff Lucy. after him. Yeah. And then Lucy also likes to make Alice feel like she's going insane. Like right. she stole her mother's bracelet, her dead mom's bracelet, had it on. Alice is like, you know, if you want to wear it, that's fine. But just ask me first. And she's like, I don't understand what you're talking about, Alice. It's my bracelet. It was my dead mother's bracelet. And Alice is like, was it? I right. Like it was I mean, that's my dead thing. mother's bracelet. Right. Is that's it? some of the stuff about Alice that's driving me crazy, right? She is so teetering on the precipice of reality that she's not even really, she's, oh, my bad. No, I mm -hmm. thought that my item was mine and yeah. that it was my mother's, but I didn't realize that you would say that with such confidence. So clearly it's I'm not sure. mine, it's yours. <laughs> I'm so sorry for troubling <laughs> you about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Baba. So and like in the in the 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 prologue, it starts out with uh, with somebody in uh, in an institution, and and the individual is doddering and uh, seems like they've got dementia, um, and you know it writes down this you know the name the name is. I know it's important, but I don't know why. And now I read this and I read the prologue in the book. So I didn't hear the accent that it was, that it was uh, Alice, but mm -hmm. it made me feel like it was like decades into the future, not like, and then, so Lucy convinces the, does all of this bizarre back and forth bullshit that anybody should have been able, any reasonable person should have been able to see through and gets the, the Tangier police thinking that Alice is actually the one that murdered her husband. She has Yusuf tell her, you know, uh, hook her up with a, uh, a forger who gives her a new passport. So when Alice is like, but it's really not Sophie Turner, it's Lucy Mason. Look at her passport. Clearly she couldn't have thought ahead on that. Well, she did, which is again, bullshit. And then, so, and then Yusuf paints a, portrait of Lucy, but Lucy gets into his studio and gets rid of it. It was all just so much circumstantial bullshit and gaslighting. Everybody convincing Alice that she didn't have any idea what was really going on. And who is this boss who shows up? John's boss who shows up and says, don't go to the police. Well, as far as I knew, John didn't even really have a job and now he's a spy of some sort. I don't what? Just, just, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, terrible. In Lucy other words. Just stealing all of her money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the lesbian, the crazy, psychotic lesbian, mm -hmm. ends up killing a couple of dudes, um, committing identity fraud. Numerous. Stealing times. all of Alice's money. And as she is committed to a facility, because again, teetering on the precipice of sanity. Um, you know, the end. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. um, Literally, the last the last scene is is uh, Lucy, um, who has finally put Lucy Mason to rest because she really she was useless anyway. She had never, you know was going to amount to any right and and, and says, a, a wealthy woman of means yeah so she's got like a suitcase full of cash and says well you know i didn't take everything just what i was owed what and then she just goes off into the sunset with her new identity i'm sure that she's going to go find some other straight woman to the terrorize, to terrorize. Yeah. 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 yeah i mean after she kills another couple of dudes yeah probably Cause that's then, cool. Okay, so then, so they're arresting Alice because because they believe that she not only murdered her husband and Tom, 
<laughs> and push the prostitute down the stairs and force her to flee for her life. So they they believe all of this. So lose it. So and I'm just like, why don't they just fucking walk her into Yusuf's cell and say, "Who's this?" And then he can go, "I don't fucking know who that is." But instead. Mm -hmm. You go into Yusuf's cell and Alan, first of all, is she alone? I don't get it. I don't know. Was she alone? I don't know. And Yusuf's like, I don't know who you are. And she's like, I'm fucking Alice Shipley, bitch. And he's like, well, who's going to believe me? I'm like, what? <laughs> she's like, well, you need to tell them. Tell the police. He's like, well, why would they believe me? Well, why wouldn't they? She's telling him that the, uh, I feel well, like I'm Alice Shifley bitch should have been the name of this book. What, what was yeah. it? Instead of Tangerine, bitch. right? Because Tangerine doesn't make any goddamn sense. It doesn't. Wow. Um, I mean, other than the fact that it made me want to sing that song. Tangerine. <laughs> she is all they say. Um, oh, but God. yeah. Um so yeah. Alice Shipley, bitch. I love that. That's great. That's that should have been <laughs> it should have. It should have been. But then it would have had to have been followed up. It would have been followed up with like, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> oh bollocks. I'm so sorry that I spoke my mind. I did not mean to. Mm. So as you can tell, we <laughs> took the hit, so you didn't have to. <laughs> Holy shit snacks. I'm glad that's over. Yeah, that was bad. Oh, it so really yeah, so was. I mean, yeah. do we know anything else that this author has done? Is this just um that was the debut you know, an novel? Anomaly? Isn't that the debut novel? Didn't I read that in one of those yeah. damn reviews somewhere? It's, yes, it's it's her debut novel. She has her PhD in English from University College Dublin, where her thesis focused on 18th century Gothic literature and an MFA in fiction writing from the University of Southern Maine. Tangerine okay, so is her novel. I get the whole Gothic thing, right? That, mm -hmm. that resonates and that makes sense, right? Because there is a certain bit of Rebecca yes. Gaslight mm -hmm. kind of component to this where somebody arrives and they're made to feel insane <clears throat> right but sure yeah but that didn't really work here it didn't it did not work here yeah i feel like you know i feel like uh <clears throat> i mean normally i'm okay with a book full of unlikable characters. If I can get behind the story, I am not I can believe it. If if, but there was just there was nothing about this book that I found redeeming. Nothing, not a single scene, n just nothing. And I don't usually feel like that, you know. Well, I think we were supposed to feel sorry for Alice. We couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, it was really hard, and. I I mean, but I have to admit that part of me was wondering if two years ago, maybe I would have felt so sorry for Alice, right? But now I'm to the point, I, gotta, I can't speak for you guys. And I mean, obviously, this is something that is probably relative to the pandemic, right? But I mean, personally, I, um, I've... I am really in touch with my rage right now <laughs> to the point where I can easily put my hands on it and interact with it. Like wow. immediately. that's <laughs> not always the case. You but should now name it. it could be Alice Shipley. <laughs> you should name your rage. Maybe, maybe. But yeah. Um, Mason would be more appropriate. I would think if it's rage, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um I apologize about I, recommending I, it initially. Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, I you know, it, it had promise. It I'm did. Not, I'm not gonna blame you, right? It really did have promise. I mean, it was a an interesting setting and time, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. could have been good, mm -hmm. but I feel like um yeah, it just kind of whiffed on all counts yeah. it uh 
everything felt really contrived. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Things that happened didn't make any sense in the moment, but then you saw that down the line, it was like, oh, we did this so that this could happen. Could happen. No, we shouldn't, right. we, as a reader, that should not be something that we feel. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yep. It, yeah, it just it felt uh, the, the the different decisions that were made uh, that made no sense. It just forced uh, forced the situation, and yeah. you, nobody wants that. So no. okay, well, so those um, people who are leaving four and five star reviews don't, want that. I don't get it. I don't yeah, get either. it. And you know, maybe maybe if somebody uh, who who watches this because they say, "Ooh, Tangerine, I love that book," and then come and see us ripping the shit out of it, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can share what it was that we didn't see, um, and and how how you got to that conclusion. I mean, did did Alice speak to you? You know, her vulnerability or. Uh, you know, her her precarious mental condition or the fact that she was, uh, you know, some sort of a victim. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess deep down the piece that doesn't resonate for me is if if I was in love with a straight woman. So much so that I had killed <laughs> the two men that she had chosen to be with. Um I guess I just don't get um, how I would then steal her identity and all her money and be pleased that she was committed to an asylum for the she, rest she of her life. Her. She, 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 what she said was, you know, this was all Alice's fault. Then it became, so previously it was Tom's fault. It was John's fault. But now to, at the end, she says, this was all Alice's fault. This is all on her. Uh, you know, she essentially, you know, she didn't specifically say this, but, you know, she essentially led her on that she, you know, had had the opportunity to make this perfect life with her. And she she just pissed it all away. And she, you know, she essentially made uh, Lucy kill these guys. And and that's how she justified it. That she was owed. That's what she said. I only took what I was owed. This was Yeah, owed. I mean, it, it kind of brings to mind, right? Remember all the backlash when, um, what was the movie with Sharon Stone? Fatal Attraction, yeah. No. That yeah, was Fatal Attraction. No, no, no. no, 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 no uh, yeah, with Michael right? Dickerson. Yeah, uh, but I mean, they uh, both had. They basic both instinct. yes, they both had Michael Douglas. So yeah. I think that's why you. Went <laughs> yeah. Right. So Sharon Stone, Fatal uh, Basic Instinct. Yes. Right. See what you made me do. Um, right. So same thing. Yeah. Right. She yeah. shows up as this crazy bisexual, um, and there's all kinds of. Um, backlash from yeah. that because it's you, like why are you going to make this person the the villain just because right. they're bisexual yeah. um and like how many years ago was that right wasn't that like it was 20, 30 years ago yeah 92 it was in the i think 80s or oh, no it was I don't know, 92 90s. i'm pretty sure yeah okay so here we are right we are well into the new millennia mm -hmm. and <clears throat> like we're doing the same stuff. We have the yeah. crazy lesbian who's going to show up. And if you reject me, I'm going to steal all your money and it's your fault. And it's just, I don't know. It's just yeah. unpleasant. And I mean, I guess, I mean, maybe we can give kudos for the fact that they didn't choose a happily ever after kind of ending. Well, but it was for Lucy. It was for, <laughs> was for Lucy Mason. Well, yes and no, right? Because well, ultimately, she, gotta, she doesn't end up with the person that she wants. No, well, but she realizes yeah. she wasn't the right person for right, her. Right, right. She, she got a bag full of money. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that that really that that, and I was like, you know, I was thinking about it, like, well, you know, it's been a long time. You know, it's not really a thing that you see all the time anymore. Should this make me as a, as uncomfortable and unhappy as it does? And so I'm glad. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, because it's still really tropey. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm just kind of tired of blaming the LGBTQ person um, 
especially during that time frame, 1950, you know, the late 50s, gay people were, were not, you know, received well and already considered suspects. So let's just write a book where the gay person, the yeah. only gay person in the, in the book right. is a fucking murderous psychopath. Yeah, yeah. mentally diseased. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the the book that I so was definitely at, pick it up. <laughs> so now, Carol, if you're still watching, you did recommend this to me, right? Do you see how I'm going to put this off if we end up reading this book and it's not good? So this book is about um, the the young women who follow who follow Charles Manson. Hmm. The girls. That's interesting. Is it yes. a novel? Yes. Oh, it's a it's. Okay, so yeah. it's fiction. It's fiction. It is, yes. Mm -hmm. Girls, their vulnerability, strength, and passion. Oh, it was not you. Did you read this? Did I'm? I feel like you're. I, I feel like you're covering your ass right now. People are already denying. <laughs> <laughs> They're already denying the recommendation. I love it. Uh. Mm. We'll have to get back to you guys on what we're going to read next because we're really <laughs> yeah, we're not it. it's not happening today. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> you would you would recommend it? Did did you read it? Uh -oh. Carol said that she would recommend it. Okay, he hasn't um, read it, but she would recommend no, it. I feel like she did read it because I recommended something else. Oh, what no. what what do you recommend? After your tremendous donation, I feel like you should be able to pick the book. That's fair. <laughs> well, you got a point. I mean, well, I'm, in, I'm intrigued by the concept, right? Mm -hmm. um, right? And we have talked about Charles Manson, I feel like, quite a bit. We mm -hmm. have, especially mm -hmm. with, uh, was it Jeff Gwynn's book? Right, yeah. but I don't think that we ever actually read that book. Um, Girls, I'm responsibility I, and going to recommend anything. Oh God. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Don't blame you. Oh, I mean, we didn't we didn't do the Manson know. book, right? Yeah, we did, did we? the uh, Jeff Gwynn book. Did we? Our, yeah. We've done so yeah. many. <laughs> but I mean, didn't I? Okay, because I feel like he um because he did other stuff right <laughs> on yeah, uh, Bonnie and Clyde and um oh, I read that other did Jim one. Jones too. I think yeah, the Jim, the Jim Jones one I read. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Good. All right. Well, um, we are uh, we're out of time. Um, oh. I do recommend that if you if you watch this and you enjoyed us um, raging, you enjoyed us. Upset, um, do go back and watch the um, especially uh, Laura. If you have not seen the uh, the Killing Cupid show, if you think Colette was on a roll on this one, you ain't seen nothing yet. I think it's like oh, forty seven yeah. minutes in and. Colette just How left. do you know that? I just yesterday. watch it again. But still, I was I mean, when I was cleaning out the refrigerator, I had my laptop set up on the side and it just laughing. Oh my God. That well, because I, I guess I get upset, right? When we talk about stalkers and how stalkers just want to be loved. They yeah. do. Right? It's it's just a bunch of dumb bullshit. They don't just want to be loved. They're crazy, psychotic people, and we should not write into the story that in the end they get the girl or whatever, and then everything's good. Like yeah. that's not right. Yeah, I feel like after after watching after watching the show yesterday, uh, after watching the Killing Cupid show yesterday, and finishing. Tangerine. Tangerine today. Tangerine. Tangerine. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I feel like I want to declare that this book was worse. Hmm, yeah. I finished yeah, killing Cupid. I, I mean, like you could like, make the argument, right? Because yeah. you've got all of the sort of gay tropes that happen. Um, but I don't know. There's stuff about killing Cupid where the chick is like, yeah, he's stalking me, um, you know, and he's sitting on my toilet fantasizing about oh, me. God, that toilet he's seat. still so awesome. attractive that, yeah, I totally want to have a relationship with him, right? So there's that aspect there that is. this there book is. have. But I feel like, I feel like, 
Okay, I mean, this is like this is like 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 comparing two piles of shit. Yeah, right. This pile of shit. Like this one has corn. A little bit better. <laughs> this pile of shit <laughs> just is you know completely fucking unbelievable. I feel like this pile of shit was worse. I feel like this was more runny and <laughs> and and stenchy. The other pile of shit at least had some, it had some consistency to it, some texture to it. Yeah, right. cool. So yeah. You could make two arguments. Corn and right? peanuts. What? You could make two arguments. Like at least this one had some gay representation, but that gay representation was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and the gay kid, the gay character in Killing Cupid was the only one that we liked. I don't even remember a gay character <laughs> because she died immediately. Oh, you know, God. Yeah, I would recommend going back and watching that show if you've got some time. You know, just put it on. Well, in the I mean, definitely more than recommending reading the actual book. Don't read the book. Yeah, don't, don't read the book. book. I mean, have we explained why we chose that book in the first place? It was explained in the in the show. It was. Okay. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Right. There you go. I don't want anybody to think day. that we all had that on our to read list, or <laughs> we were aware of the author and we were super excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I think you're we're looking really for just looking for a tie-in for Valentine's Day. Right, exactly right. <laughs> no, that yeah. was it. That yeah. was it. Are there? Is there a holiday next month, September? Yeah, oh, September. Labor, Day. Labor Day. Oh yeah. I mean, so I guess we could pick a book about a pregnant person. <laughs> <laughs> or busting unions or something, or bringing it's unions all, it's in. It's also it's our 11th anniversary next. Oh month. shit. Yeah. Wow. Oh well, what so? What is the eleventh year? Is it like um, polyurethane or? <laughs> Let's do some research and uh, you know, we'll see if we get uh, if we get a um, a, uh, 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 a recommendation. Like how many gifts are made of Formica, though? I mean, that would be hard. Well, I mean, we could find, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. If you guys have a recommendation for a book that, that you think that we would enjoy. Um, or a book that we would hate. <laughs> Better be like, sure we'd enjoy it, though. <laughs> are the hatey ones, the, the, the yeah, shows that are liked a little bit more than the, the books that we love? I mean, mm. is it me? No. Yeah. No. All right. Well, we're gonna end. So, uh, <laughs> if if, you, if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to kick in and help us buy books, help us buy um, uh, uh, merchandise for giveaways. Um, we talked about upgrading our stream yard, which I called Steam Yard consistently on the last show, uh, but it is Stream Yard, um, so that we can get rid of the little. Duck. Well, it is the little doodly there and put a cup. Yeah, I don't know that that bothers anybody, but but I, yeah, I so. love the idea of steam yard like it's a turd out in the field. <laughs> yeah, right. The Cleveland <laughs> steam yard. <laughs> yeah, and on that note, thank you for tuning in. We spent a lot of shit talk this episode. We did a lot of shit talk in this so episode. So much shit talk. All right. So stay tuned. We'll let you know through Facebook when the next show is and what we're reading. It might come down the wire maybe a couple of weeks beforehand, but we'll let you know. No, I feel like we're going to figure it out today. Uh -huh. Unless we get a good recommendation. We're in trouble. Okay. We're in trouble. All right. So long, everybody. Bye.